So Zansayed, as I said here, player two on the right. And then on the left, we have Isaac De Leon. I'm excited to see what uh, what Zan's playing this weekend. Um, I think that players, you know, are they're brewing up some cool and interesting decks. I spy Ruby, yes, and Amethyst on that side of the table. So it looks like players are altering their hands right now. Yes, and it looks like Isaac is playing an Amber Steel deck. Ah. Uh -huh. So this is going to be a fun matchup. So Steel Absolutely. Song versus Ruby Amethyst. Yeah, we got a little peek of that last game. Um, yes. So we'll we'll see. Um, I know when you see uh, like the same sort of type decks again, but each player puts their own kind of little twist on it. They pick the cards they want to use, um, and and they tool it into their own way. So I'm I mean I'm I'm really excited to see how this goes down. Yeah, there's so much, especially as we get more and more cards in the pool of cards for Disney Larkana. You know, each set, you know. <laughs> the pair, the decks pairings are going to look slightly different from player to player. Lots of little variations. And in some cases, you might just have a player decide to play a certain card because it's from their favorite movie. You oh, know? yeah. <laughs> or a favorite character, art they love. Yeah, your own <laughs> little personal touch on it. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, altering the hands, if players are watching, if you don't know, um, in Disney Arcana, you have an opportunity to alter your opening hand where you can discard up to seven cards, redraw, and so both players have done that, and now we're jumping in. Isaac um, inked a golden harp to play Cinderella Ballroom Sensation, which I'm very excited to see that he's playing golden harp in this deck. She is super powerful if you're able to play songs, but um, when she is in play, if you don't play a song, she gets banished. Banished. Wow. So uh, I, I'm, I'm very excited to, to see her to see her come up again. Yeah, golden harp, super fun. Uh, over on Zan's side, we saw that Chernobog's followers come down, which is a great card. It can replace itself when whenever that character quests. You can banish them to draw a card, but he did not get to the Chernobog's followers, did not stick around for long because uh, yeah. <laughs> Isaac said, Let the storm rage on. Oh, <laughs> let the storm. I can't do it the same as you. <laughs> Um, we're playing uh, Ariel Spectacular Singer, uh, allowing Isaac to do a quick peek. Uh, top four cards, he was able to get another Let the Storm Rage on. And now that he has two characters in play along with that Pirate Poo Caps and Piglet, uh, Piglet will quest for two additional lore. Piglet is such a fantastic card. He is adorable, first of all. Yeah. <laughs> I love the, the Piglet Poo Pirate. Um, and the ability to get that extra lore when you have two or more characters. Absolutely. And aren't we all a little stronger with friends? Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, so Isaac is able to, has been keeping like a pretty tight leash on to what uh, Zan is doing on that side. Um, the brawl taking out the aerial, uh, which is which is a bit of a hit because uh, she was, uh, oh, wait, oh. We, I just never got, mind. An, I just never got mind. another on deck. Let's, <laughs> let's do another four and see. Another let the storm rage on. I think that's, 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 that's the, the third. third one. That's the third one that we've seen, um, which I know, I know it's such a great card. You get the card draw, but also there's lots of other song cards, uh, songs in the Steel Song deck that are just really fabulous. Every song is, is great. Absolutely. And like Le and Leah mentioned in our last game that, you know, Steel Song it tends to run almost a third of their cards of songs. Mm -hmm. And Zan, uh, you know, he was able to use that brawl on Ariel, but it's really unfortunate that, that that Flynn got taken off the board. Such a strong card. You know, having that Flynn CC opening is something that the Ruby Amethyst players really want to see. So uh, that was unfortunate. We do see a rabbit come out here, which is great, uh, especially for card draw. If you can get it bouncing with some mims is really, really nice. Uh, but, yeah, unfortunately for Zan, Isaac is really has the board control right now. Absolutely. Um, Isaac Inking, Robin Hood, Champion of Sherwood, playing Strength oh. of the Raging Fire, doing three damage on that Merlin, which um, forces him to be banished. But at least when he leaves play, we still get that card draw. We do. And, which, you know, so that might deter some players from banishing a card like Merlin because you think, oh, that's going to give my opponent an extra card. But because of the Madame Mims being able to bounce it back and forth, you're really stopping that from happening. From becoming an, a back and forth, yes. back and forth, back yes. and forth. Yeah. 
And there's that Sisu, which is such a fabulous card. Uh, so here's a fun fact about Sisu. In the movie, she doesn't have any magical powers as a dragon, but all her siblings do. Oh. And so she gets the magical powers from the siblings when she touches the dragon gemstone. But in the Disney Lorcana, Sisu is... Pretty magical. So magical. <laughs> yeah, she gets extra strength for every card that's in your opponent's hand, and she quests for two, a really fabulous card. Absolutely. Um, looks like Isaac now has an uncontested board. Uh, <laughs> yes, and I think that uh, Zan knew the writing on the wall and actually just decided to call it a game. He was not able to keep up, and uh, Isaac took game one. Wow, that was a fantastic victory. Um, again, we, we, we talk about this a lot. Just if there's. All right, so Zan, I know, like he, like you said, he decided to just call it game, but going into game two, it's going to be really interesting to see if he can find the answers that he needs. Last time, he wasn't able to keep any characters on the board. Mm -hmm. um, we really want to see that Flynn Sisu combination come out, maybe some Queen's Castles, which we didn't see from Zan Not last at all. game. Yeah. And I assume that they're in his deck. Queen's Castle is such a key card. Yes, absolutely. And, yeah, you know, one of my favorites. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's it's still the best location in in Disney Lorcana. I think it's so good with the card draw, the seven willpower. Um, there's not a lot of answers for it. Um, no. it, it Steel, of course, does have answers for locations. Uh, yes, yes. Um, they have a few. I, I'm not sure what all Isaac uh, is running that can can take out uh, the Queen's Castle. There is a uh, along came Zeus, which can do five damage on a right. character or location. So right. you could use that in combination with another uh, character. But yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Um, Isaac getting his first uh, singer on the board, Ursula. I love this Ursula. I was so happy when Vanessa made an appearance. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So many good singers. We did see that Cinderella, there's Ursula, there's Ariel. Um, I, I just love the singers in Disney Lorcana. <laughs> it's because you're one of them. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we think of Disney Lorcana singers. I think of you. <laughs> <laughs> I do love to sing. There's a lot of a lot of good singers in the Lorcana community. Absolutely. All right, so we don't have a Flynn on the board, but we do have that Sisu. We have uh, the Madame Mim Snake, which, I mean, even though it's not a high quester, it is nice that it's a 3-3 three, three character and maybe can be an answer for some of the characters on Isaac's side of the board. Absolutely. That that strength is, is quite Ooh. solid for a two. Oh, uh, yeah. with the Spectacular Singer coming down, it looks like Isaac was able to pull a whole new world out of that. Um, and when... Oh, oh, we have... And then along oh. came Zeus. <laughs> and Zeus is out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love that card. Along came Zeus. Like we, I just was saying earlier, it can do five damage to a character or a location. It can be sung as a song. Um, it's uninkable, but it's such a great card that I know Steel Song decks are usually running at least two copies of it. Absolutely. And uh, the other uh, whole new world is also uninkable. Mm -hmm. And I do realize that it is very nice when you get it off of a or, uh, of a singer. Um, with Ariel, because yes. now, now Zan knows it's there. <laughs> yes. Yep. Well, we have more bouncing going on over here on Zan's side of the board. And a little magic broom coming down. Just a one-cost character here. Um, it's a, a one-two character. Um, it's very similar to Chernobyl followers, uh, but different that um, when you play another character, you can choose to banish magic broom to draw a card. So whereas Chernobyl followers, you quest and can choose to banish, um, you do have to have another character. But both of those cards in the Ruby Amethyst deck are really there to help with the card draw and look for those cards that you're, you're going to want in this game. Absolutely. Um, Isaac did something very cool here. He knocked his Ursula Vanessa into Madame Mim, taking three damage and then immediately playing Rapunzel, who is able to heal up to three and, and draw three cards. So excellent being able to kind of damage your own characters to, to draw some cards there. Absolutely. Yeah, Rapunzel is from set one and I would argue is is still one of the best cards in Amber to have as part of your deck, and she's been good every set. Absolutely, absolutely, she has definitely uh, survived 
survived this entire year being very, very important. Yes. Can you believe that we're a year into Disney Arcana? It's so exciting. Absolutely. It's been such an amazing first year, and these challenges have been one of the amazing things about the first year of Lorcana. And here we see Zan deciding to challenge with both Madame M. Snake and Magic Broom to uh, banish that Ursula and an friends on the other side into the inkwell. Oh, yes. And we do have um, him choosing to uh, banish that magic broom, as I was saying earlier, when that Maui came in, and then using Maui to banish that aerial singer. Um, and he knows, Zan knows that that whole new world is in Isaac's hand because he picked it up earlier when he played Ariel. So really smart here. Rapunzel can't sing a whole new world, being only a four-cost character. So if Isaac wants to play a whole new world, he's going to have to use his ink to do that. Absolutely, yeah. And getting... Getting those singers off the table was and, a great move. <laughs> was that a Cinderella? It was a Cinderella stout-hearted, yes. Um, Rapunzel singing Let the Storm Rage On. Uh, doing two damage to that Maui and drawing a card. Uh, we got Robin Hood coming down. And then uh, we're going to take out that Maui completely. Uh, this is really interesting. This has kind of been a lot of... Back and forth, neither one of the players is pulling really far ahead. Zan does have three lore. Um, Isaac is still not on the board yet. But the board state just kind of keeps going a little bit back and forth, back and forth. Just no one able to make a, a really big jump. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Isaac got that Maui out, and another one comes down, uh, taking out his Rapunzel. Uh, talking about cards that have been good since set one. Absolutely. <laughs> Maui, I think, uh, especially Ruby players, but I think most people would agree that Maui is one of the best cards in all of Disney Larkana. It's just so powerful. Absolutely. Uh, recently, we've had a couple of new Rush characters, you know, with, with Hercules and stuff, but people keep gravitating toward that Maui. We just, he has a lot of good staying power. He does, and he's inkable. He's, uh, yeah, he's so good. Isaac dropping the whole new world he was unfortunately had to pay ink for it uh instead of being able to sing it you want to know a fun fact about maui always is that he, <laughs> he was actually the look of maui was designed after the rock's um, grandfather oh that's incredible yes. <laughs> oh there's that harp coming down like there you were talking she, there about she is and because the whole new world was played this turn she gets to um hang out another day she can hang out for for another turn uh, this card is so interesting to me because you would think oh maybe she won't stay on the board very long but this deck like you're saying is really designed to have song after song after song after absolutely. song absolutely yeah with so many cards being song you want to keep playing them i um we saw in the last match um, a lot of use of the Sleepy's flute. I don't know if Isaac is running it, but we have not been able, we have not seen that yet. Oh, that's true. Yeah, Sleepy's flute is a, a really great card in the Steel Song deck because it's that uncontested lore. When you have it on the board, you just gain a lore if you played a song during your turn. Absolutely. It looks like uh, when. Isaac played Whole New World that Madame Medusa went into the discard pile on Zan's side. Uh, Madame Medusa is such a strong card and is a really great answer for a lot of cards in Isaac's deck. Absolutely, yes. I want to say even Robin Hood is, uh, I believe, just three strength. And, so, yes. and it's such a strong character that it's... <laughs> oh, and there's a Madame Medusa coming down. Mm -hmm. um, I lied about the Golden Heart. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> continuing to strum another day. <laughs> she did not stay around for long. Not so much. <laughs> um, and, and also, yeah, singers, amazing at singing their songs. Their songs are, are really their power. So uh, not a huge lot of strength generally coming off of them. Of course, exceptions. Um, this is a great uh, card to have in this deck, Mr. Smee. Ooh, is it Smee you're looking for? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, bare necessities. So we're getting a good look here at Zan's hand. Be prepared went into the discard. Bare necessities. Talk about that card, because I, I just love it. Oh, Bare Necessities is fantastic for only two ink. <laughs> um, or, or a singer, too. Um, you get to look at your opponent's entire hand and discard any card that's not a character, which means you got songs, actions, items, locations. 
so many things that can be discarded. And there was a lot that Zan had in his hand. I saw that he also had a sorcerer's spell book that was in his hand. But of course, that be prepared is the largest the looming threat. threat. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. There's, there's building up a beautiful wide board and then mm. that coming down does not feel so good. Oh, I think it feels great. Oh, you love it? <laughs> <laughs> when I'm the one playing it. Oh, oh, there you go. That's the difference. <laughs> yes, for sure. Oh, we see a Merlin goat coming down on Zan's side of the board. Uh, we love this goat, especially when you can start bouncing him like Zan is doing boom, here. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, except he is deciding to bring the Mim snake back. So Heal her up. Yep. That's great. And then, of course, then that snake is in hand and can bounce the Merlin goat back next turn. Absolutely. This is quite a board here that Zan has. And Isaac, I mean, he does have that Smee, but he doesn't. Oh, a Perdita. A Perdita. Devoted mother. A really great card. When you play her or when she quests, you're able to pull a character two or less and play it for free. So we have we have Robin Hood back. But um, comparing Zan's board right now compared to last game. Mm, yeah. He, absolutely stunning. He's got so many great characters and that, with so much versatility and, and utility, really. Yes. He has quite a lot here. And Isaac doesn't really have a lot of high-strength characters to deal with some of these things on Zan's side of the board. No, I mean, you look at Ursula, you look at Robin Hood, you look at Perdita, just like just like one or two. Yeah. Well, we're going to take out, let's see here. Maui is running into Mr. Smee? Smee? No, I can't quite tell what Zan is doing here. He's, maybe he's still deciding. There, You know, I, I think that's really interesting, though, like seeing him take some time here to decide what he wants to do. And it's all these little micro decisions that end up with a player winning or losing a game is, is which character am I going to challenge into the character on the other side of the board and making the right decisions there. So we see Madame Medusa into the Robin Hood and Maui into Mr. Smee. Uh, Medusa stays on the board. She is a 4-4 character, so she would have lived even if she had challenged into Smee. But, um, oh, and then <laughs> bounced back with a snake and replayed Medusa. Yes, to take out Perdita, which a really fantastic move because, like, even Zan had so many options of what to bounce to get the goat or possibly bounce the goat. Mim back because she has the rush to play her again. So it's just all those little decisions that these players make, and they're playing at such a high level that it, it really makes such a huge difference in the long term with these games. Absolutely. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if we um, see that spell book come down on Zan's side of the board. You know, in round one, we saw a Ruby Amethyst player that had spell book in their deck. And I feel like we did not see a lot of spell book when Bucky was around. And so it's interesting this weekend seeing some of the Ruby Amethyst decks have that spell book in, in, included in the list. And I wonder if part of that is just because... Um, you know, with Bucky, you're more likely to lose a card out of your hand with from the discard right. that you would never get the value from from that spell book. But now that discard is not as much of a threat with Bucky gone that we've seen that card now come back into these decks. Yeah, absolutely, because these decks are so tooled to the different decks that these players expect to play. And so when one card comes out that really, really shakes things up, uh, you just see these little changes happening. And that's what I've been so excited to see this weekend is is because yeah. we know a lot of these decks pretty well and just seeing the small changes and how, how different those are. Yep. And there's another Perdita that Isaac brought out. I do love Pardita. She's so fun. It's a really, really, really fun card. Oh, 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 oh why? Two uh, of them. What's better than one spellbook is two. two spellbook. <laughs> yeah. So um, Zan will be able to exert this uh, for one ink or every turn and get a lore. Yeah. I mean, Isaac needs to win on this next turn or really we're in trouble do something because Zan is sitting here at 17 lore oh. and he has one two three four on the board just with characters you have that goat that could potentially bounce back or be banished and gain a lore and then two spell books 
this might, that spell book might spell the end of this game for Isaac. Absolutely. Isaac able to play his entire hand and it <laughs> still looks. Yeah, and you saw him good. put his hands up. <laughs> like, like that was what? It. What? <laughs> Isaac was.